Well, I, okay, I, I think the starting point can be, uh, okay, there are two things on my mind. The first one, where <laughs> I landed with Nana Yajantua, uh, and I'm sure you've been in parliament, as I don't know whether, uh, Napo was there before you came. No, right? no, we, we, we are. You were, you were there? Yeah, okay, minutes. you are having parliament at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sure you monitored what happened in the in Kumasi. Yeah. Now, what are your thoughts on, First of all, let's start with the comments he made and the way he made the comments. I know you as one of the people who would uh, for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah DM. Yeah. Were you offended by the things he said? Oh, well, let me, first let me say good morning to your cherished mm. listeners and to all of you here. And to say that I'm excited to be here. I'm just sorry that uh, mm. traffic did not permit me to get here early. Mm. But I hope we'll be able to do justice to the little time we have mm. and be able to address the issues. Mm. Um, as somebody who was naturally, biologically born into an Nkrumah's family, mm. I was seriously offended and annoyed with the comment he made. But then I decided not to indulge myself in any debate and argument about that utterance because... I think the most important thing for me to think about is the wonderful presentation that John Mama had okay. with the media. Mm. And also, I think there are much more important things to be discussed. I will want the MPP and all their commentators to live with their conscience um, for what was said and what um, defense they are putting up. Ghanaians are almost, almost exasperated with what uh, was said. And Ghanaians are condemning them for it. So I told myself yesterday and I told our colleagues that I think we better not waste time on that. We have an agenda to prosecute. We have to sell our 24 hour economy. We have to give hope to Ghanaian youth. And that is what my focus will want to be. I will not want to waste my time on somebody's useless faux pas. That is what I told myself. Basena, um, all respects to you because you've asked me this question. Let me say it's very unnecessary, unexpected, and undeserving. And I want to leave it like that. Unnecessary, unexpected, and undeserving. Mm. Undeserving of somebody who wants to hold a position that he's aspiring for. Mm. But you see, it's not him. Out of the abundance of the heart proceeded out of the mouth. Mm. That is the belief of all MPP people in this country. They hate Nkrumah to the marrow. They don't want to hear the name Nkrumah. They will do everything mm. in their power to denigrate the name and achievements of Osajefo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. But the truth of the matter is that they cannot, they cannot even compare themselves to the government of Jerry Rollins, the government of Mills Mahama, and the government of John Mahama and Mr. Atta. They can't, in terms of achievement, they can't, let alone get to the level of Nkrumah. So I leave that to their judgment. Hmm. It's a, it's an obvious infantile comparison. Obvious infantile comparison. The comparison of a child. Yes, it's only a child that will do this comparison. But he said he spoke the truth. Well, that's what he says. But I can say that uh, I don't believe even my 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 youngest child, who is seventeen years, hmm. will want to do this comparison after studying hmm. what in Kuma achieve for this country mm. and also going through I know he's experiencing today's Ghana mm. I, I think my, my my own son if I ask him to mark this particular statement will mark it zero mm. it's an infantile uh, let me say comparison it's, 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 it is not a comparison any human being should do any Ghanaian should do the reason why I use the word human being is that Nkrumah is not only celebrated by Ghanaians is celebrated by the whole world. Hmm. 
Nkuma is compared to the Abraham Lincolns, Martin Luther's, Marcus Garvey's, Haley Salasis, and the rest. Nkuma is not compared to people like Nana Kufado and Baumia. No. It's like we are comparing, uh, let me say, gold to, excuse my language, uh, effluent from the, from, from, from the public toilet. What did you just say? I, I mean what I said. If you do that comparison, if you dare do that comparison, it's like a comparing gold or diamond to an effluent from the public, public toilet. Where who is supposed to be gold and who is supposed to be everyone? Obviously, Nkrumah. And then another Baumia's government. Hmm. See that? Is it is disgusting? The, the the comparison is wholly disgusting. It's, it's it's so unwholesome to do. You understand? And and I don't know what prompted that discussion, hmm. but seriously speaking. Um, I think my very good friend, if I, it's my very, very good friend, did not do justice to himself as a member of parliament, mm. as a medical doctor, because the intelligent level exhibited with that statement is none, none that I expect uh, from anyone uh, of that stature. Um, you have a platform. Mm -hmm to market yourself as somebody who has been nominated by a very hopeless and useless flag bearer. I thought he would use the occasion to give some confidence to the MPP grassroots okay. and Ghanaians in general that I've come to add or do something or strengthen the weakness okay. of Baulaya. Mm. But, then, but then he rather came to spoil on already spoiled soup. Um, it's like a soup that is spoiled and you are asked to put potash in it, uh, put coal in it, and try and get some of this thing and see whether you can salvage the little meat that is left in the soup. And then you rather go out there and you pour sand into it. It's worse. It's, 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 it's humiliating. I, and I've seen many, many MPP people yesterday in Parliament, some of the MPs, we're talking to them. I'm saying, where they are? I'm Fakura. Where they are? Where they are? So instead of bettering the tickets, making the ticket better, he seems to have worsened it. Yes, that's that's exactly what I think. And destroyed because the ticket see, altogether. The ticket is already a very hopeless ticket. Okay. And we thought that this was an op opportunity to at least salvage a little bit mm -hmm. of the failure that is facing them. Mm -hmm. But then he's he's really destroyed it, Kra. I see. Yeah, and that is that is unfortunate. Um I'm a political opponent. I should be re relishing in this, but I think that the distortion to our history mm -hmm. is much important to me. Because this morning I wish that was one of the questions that our BEC uh, you know, students are going to answer, mm. you would have confused them. A question of a comparison between Nkrumah. Uh, yes, you would have confused them because any one of them who will answer the way he answered will get zero. Because the teachers who are going to mark <laughs> have read a history about this country. Mm. And they would think that that is an infantile comparison that any student will want to do. I see. Well, having said that, because their event came two days after that of former President John Romani yeah. Mahama. First of all, you've been you spent a significant time time, uh, time in journalism, yeah, uh, uh, in communications. What's your uh, and I I think this will be difficult for you because you are you are, you are wearing the hat of an NDC MP, mm -hmm. uh, and of course. That would be difficult. But objectively, what do you think of his performance on that stage? President Mama? Yes. I've always known him to be a great, uh, let me say, orator. Mm. I've known him to be somebody who 
can think on his feet. I've always known him to be somebody who has the issues on his fingertips and can easily handle them. But I never thought that he would give an excellent and master class depiction of who he is that day. Excellent he master class. He was excellent. He was a super. You see, this is a gathering of not just any selected media men in the country. Mm. The creme de la creme. Mm. You know, people who matter. And this is not a situation where you were handpicking those who ask questions, mm. as some people have done in the past, mm. writing questions for some journalists to ask. These are not journalists that you and I will try to induce them to ask particular question. Mm. You understand? Because I don't know anyone in the NDC who will have the courage to go to somewhere like Bernard Avle, mm. Captain Smart, you know, and 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 Cloche and all those people and ask them to ask a particular question. Mm. So those questions which were asked were pertinent, very, very important questions that will ruffle every politician. Mm. Especially the question on the Airbus mm. was fantastic. And the way he delivered, the answer he gave, I know from today, will put rest to that issue. Mm. The question on the issue of corruption mm. under his government, just look at the way he handled it. Mm. As a journalist sitting down, I... I I was asking myself, if I were the one asking the question in the studio, what further question would I ask? Because the answer was apt, was excellent, and virtually, it, 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 it didn't give anybody sense of saying mm. that there, there are some hidden truths that he must bring out. He went straight answering the question. Is he? And, and I've never, let me say this, I've never seen any Ghanaian politician mm. stand there in front of the media and excellently delivering on the sensible intelligent probing questions that were asked mm. um i've seen your mama do a lot of this before i i i was with professor mills mm. and i saw how he delivered mm. and and I uh, listened to Jerry Rollins on a rare, okay, one or two occasions where he met the media. Um, I saw President Kufo. Mm. And, and I can say that John Mama's performance last time was impeccable. Mm. Yes, it's, it's, it's just amazing. And, and yesterday, I spent a lot of time. Uh, I'm a Democrat. Okay. Yeah, so. I, I, I listened to Biden yesterday and I know just as all those people who are asking that Bi Biden should get off the race, should step down from the race after yesterday will change their mind. The same way I know that people who had certain perceptions about John Dramani Mahama, after that encounter, that conversation with the media, will immediately decide. Even if you have not decided to vote for him, after that day, I know you'll have changed your mind to vote for him. Dr. Baumia thinks a debate is needed. A debate is required. He wants to face former President John Dramani Mahama. He wants to put his policies to the test. He's ready for former President Mahama to put whatever he says to the test. Do you agree that a debate is required in the selection? I want to debate Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. You are not on that. You will not be on the ballot paper. It's possible you? to be on the ballot paper. But as we speak now, you are not on the ballot I said, paper. I want, because Jomama is above him. Jomama is far, far, far ahead of him. How? He it, is in a terms vice of president articulation, okay. in terms of level of intelligence, in terms of performance, uh, he can never be compared with Jomama. Uh, just as Napo tried to compare Nanado with Nkrumah, I think that in terms of achievement, you can never compare Baumia to John Dramani Mahama. But the common denominator is that they, they are both uh, presidential You know something? Candidates. In 2016, Baumia, then vice president, 
said he wasn't ready to debate John Dramani Mama. That John Draman Mama should go to the nurses, the teachers, the farmers, the teacher, uh, teacher trainees. It should go to taxi drivers. It should go to the markets to debate the people, debate the people first before coming to debate with him. You understand? Mm. He put 170 questions to the then vice president, Pakwese Misata. Mm. May he so rest in peace. You see, Baumia one is a hypocrite. Two, he's not credible. Three, he's a liar. He's very dishonest as a politician. These are not the things and the qual qualities and the characteristics you want to find in John Dramani Mama. He, he, he's, he's above reproach when it comes to these things. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's uh, perfect. Mm -hmm. But then the issue is that when it comes to issue about corruption, dishonesty, intelligence, uh, lying, and hypocrisy, John Mama cannot be found in that bracket. Okay. But Baumia, every Ghanaian child, knows that he's a liar one he's dishonest too and he's he's not credible three so i don't want to be i don't want to be on a platform with somebody who is dishonest not credible he's a liar he's a hypocrite that's one at least you can your mama will not be on the same platform with him on that vein won't you have the opportunity to expose those lies the second issue is that he wants to debate your mama on what the economy yes he has been the head of the economic management team of this government for eight years when your mama was the head of the economic management team, even without his background in economy mm. and in economics, your mama was able to bring Ghana's inflation to single digit okay. and maintain it consistently for at least 13 months. Your mama's achievement in that alone, without a background in economics, without a doctorate in economics, Jomama achieved single digit inflation as the chairman of the economic management team for 13 sustainable months. Jomama, as the head of the economic management team, at least, even when he became president, you know, and he was hesitant on the 7th of January 2017, the dollar to CD was four CDs. 32 pesos. Okay. That Baumia called a calamity. Okay. Baumia called a disaster. His wife called John Mahama a demon and devil Radio for doing that. Baumia himself sang the chorus. If the fundamentals of the economy is weak, the dollar will expose you. Today, that same fundamentals have proven that even when it comes to the management of the economy, John Mama is far, far ahead of Baumia. John Mama doesn't do book economics alone. He does common sense economy. And that is why he was able to maintain a single-digit inflation. And when he was visiting as president, the inflation at that time was how much? was just 13%. Today, inflation is what? Even yesterday, they said they revised the figure. It is 22.7%. Inflation went as far back, as far as 52%. When your mama was living, the total debt of this country was 122 billion. Today, what's the total debt? 686 billion. The economics maverick, the magician who could hold the dollar and give the key to the IGP at his time now. The, the, the debt portfolio of this country has moved from 122 to 686 billion. So, what's the, the debate for? Do you know where the debate is? Mm. The debate is the reality you and I are living. Ghanaians are not interested in any debate because any debate will not change their situation. Okay. Ghanaians are living a real life today where three pieces of tomatoes is being sold for 20 cities. Where two pieces of onion is being sold for 15 cities. 
where five fingers of pepper is being sold for five cities. That is the reality of Ghanaians. Ghanaians are living the reality where petrol, a gallon, is being sold for 66 cities. Ghanaians are living a reality where a ball of kinky has moved from 50 pesos to five cities. In fact, the commonest one, the one that even breaks my heart, is that Baumier's favorite calipo has moved from 50 pesos to five cities, 50 pesos. That is the reality. That is the debate. So Baumia should first go to Abosokai, to the spare pass market, and have a debate with the Guta people at Abosokai. When he finishes, he should go to the GPRTU people and have a debate with them. After that, he should go to the NACOP people he has refused to pay, have a debate with them. The NAPCO, yeah. When if the NAPCO, when he finish, he should go to the afforestation people and have a debate with them. Have a debate with national service personnel. Have a debate with Ghanaians, pensioners, who he has given a haircut. And those who have been affected by the domestic debt exchange program. Have a debate with all these people. When he's finished, John Mama will be ready for him for a debate on the 7th of December, 2024. So you seem, you never support, if your views were you soft, see, you never supported I would never support in a situation where your mama would sit down with a joker, a comedian, like Baumia. Joker, comedian? Yes! You're is a joker. the vice president of this republic. And so what? The vice president of the republic has, has, has proven to be a joker. He goes on platforms, he dance offbeat, he, he'll be, he'll be, uh, you know, nodding his head like a lizard, and he's not a joker. I'm describing what he does. I'm not saying he is the man is a joker. The man himself jokes. Everything about him presents like a comedian. Even yesterday, when he was even making that, I want to quote Kwakubako, Takeshi call for a debate. Look at the way he was presenting it. Like a joker. Did you see him dancing the last time? In Komode, Bob Santo, eh? and the rest will not dance that way. Have you seen him recently? Dancing on their platforms. And you say, I shouldn't call him a joker? Oh, well. <laughs> I've never seen any vice president in this country. At least I've grown enough to see the vice presidency of uh, the Graf Johnson, Kong Kensen Aka, Alu Mahama, John Ivasata Mills, John Dramani Mahama, Pakwe Sebi Saata. I saw the vice presidency of all these people. I'm not that young. You understand? Yes. And I've never seen any of our vice presidents live a comical life, behave that awkwardly on a political platform like Mahmoud Baumia. Hmm. And it's, it's, it's funny, it's interesting, because the truth of the matter is that uh, just a short one. The, 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 the conditions of Ghanaians, let me say this. Hmm. The reason why I, I will be so much frustrated and disappointed in anybody who asks for a debate is that you are talking about somebody who with all his economics and doctorate in economics and so-called accolades in economics has supervised the collapse of our central bank. Mm. Never in the history of Ghana, since the Bank of Ghana was established, have there been a call for the recapitalization of the central bank. This is the worst record, apart from our economy being declared a junk economy, for the Bank of Ghana to collapse. Somebody who supervised the Bank of Ghana in fact, going into debt of 60 billion. Somebody who today used 40, almost over 40 billion to solve a 9 billion bank crisis. And you're asking me to urge your mama to debate him. Why would a driver, 
a professional driver debate a driver's mate? Why? The man says he's a mate. Why does the man say he's a mate? So today, why does the mate want to want to debate the driver, a chief driver? Because he wants the steer now. He wants the steer. Yeah. He should wait when the steer has been given to him, and he has learned how to drive well. Then he can debate the chief driver. See, well, if you just join us, it's Honorable Neil and Tim Vanda for a, a, a studio. He's member of Parliament for do 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 do. I wanted to ask you about one of the questions that came up. In fact, I don't know whether you you heard that was Park with Shandor for some yeah. brothers. That was when he asked about. The father for all. Yeah. You were very close to former President Mills. You by no means can be considered a moderate. Everybody who knows Neil and David Boy does not see you as a moderate. Yeah. But you were very close to former President Mills. The late President Mills was also considered a moderate and preferred to pursue unity ahead of sometimes even seeking accountability. Um former President Mahama says Yes, we worked in that mode after former President Mills passed on. We had to continue with that mode. But now there's a change, a shift in direction. Now instead of going with the father for all, we will by all means seek accountability. What do you make of that? And uh, you know the circumstances under which the, the late Professor Mills decided to go with that approach. Um, do you agree that... There's a need to put that behind now. I totally agree with President Mahama. Mm. I was very close to Professor Mills, and I mm. can say, um, if I will not be offending the oath of office I took, mm. and if my colleagues will not forgive me, mm. um, let me say this, uh, they should forgive me if I say it. Mm. Um, on assumption of office, we had the clergy visiting Professor Mills, okay. and also very senior Ghanaian citizens like Ishmael Yamsin and the rest visiting Professor Mills, mm. and they... Um, pleading with him that judging from the sort of tense atmosphere we had, judging from the polarization of the country, God, looking at the circumstances under which he was elected, they feel and they think that God has a purpose to use him as a bridge to unify this country. Okay. So they, they prevailed upon him to try as much as possible to temper the sort of tension, the sort of acrimonious environment that we had at the time. Mm. So uh, President Mills decided that, look, I don't want to pursue an agenda where people would think that I'm pursuing my political opponents. Okay. Because I want to drive this country towards united Ghana. Mm -hmm. So that the daunting task of rebuilding Ghana will be achieved. Because it was his belief that uh, one finger cannot catch uh, 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 I don't know what the, the, is it not, uh, Mize or something I, know, that is a, I want to bring a, um, translate the, the, the a proverb, a traditional proverb mm. into English um, one finger does not tie a knot mm. that's his belief mm -hmm. that um, in order to build a country we need to work together okay. in, despite our political uh, different political persuasions. Okay. So he had an agenda. And as such, it even angered a lot of our party people, including the late president, uh, the late former president, mm -hmm. Jerry John Rawlings, okay. who said that the, 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 a particular agenda must be pursued in order to curtail the tendency for corruption to thrive. Okay. In order to make sure that the voters, the ordinary Ghanaian, will have a sense that when we vote for people, we vote for them because we want accountability. Mm. We want transparency. Mm. And we want a governance of, uh, let me say, purity and also of faithfulness mm. to uh, our fidelity to the Constitution and, uh, 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 let me say, responsible office. Mm. So, Professor Mills was very careful and it's, that's why he said he is father for all. Okay. He, he didn't want the political opponents to feel that he, he's come into office to pursue them. He didn't also want people to think that in his quest to bring people to account, 
he is pursuing a political ad persecution and agenda. Okay. So that was it. But today's reality is that Ghanaians are totally vexed, mm. annoyed, angered by the level of corruption and impunity in the political class. Okay. And if what has happened in Kenya is anything for any of us to live by, it is time for political actors to be made responsible for their actions. Okay. And I believe that is the reason why Joe Mahama said the time for Father for All exorcism has come. Mm. All of us must exercise ourselves from that belief of Father for All mm. and understand that when you get opportunity to serve in political office, you must be responsible because there's a day for accountability. That he is not going to make sit down and allow people to go off the hook. People will not be people will not be allowed to go off the the, the, the measure of accountability mm -hmm. in the in the pursuit of father for all. So he has exercised himself and he admonished those of his own people who be privileged to serve to understand that don't expect him to have that father for all attitude so you come to office and be responsible because you will be held accountable for your actions it's 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 one of the reasons why i said president, president mama was just marvelous that day because this answer he gave subsequently after that day i've i've monitored the media and almost all Ghanaians who were asked to comment on that gave him 100% for that answer. Okay. Um, look, let me say it here. Under Professor John uh, uh, Evans, Atamils, and John Mama, mm -hmm. many of us who served were conscious of one thing. You don't dare misbehave. Okay. Because we knew the the the, the distaste and and that hatred for corruption by the government. So those of us who served were careful not to offend the sensibilities of the president and the vice president. Then, under the Jomama, the same. You you and I know that Jomama started persecution of his own appointees. That under Jomama, it was even a crime to even dream of being a millionaire. Dream. Don't dare dream of enriching yourself as an appointee of John Dwayne Mahama. Because people who dreamt and dared to, to tell people their dreams were fired. People lost their positions because they were involved in acts that were not corrupt but misapplication of funds. People lost their positions because they had they had misapplied monies and the process they abused the procurement process. People were prosecuted and are in jail today for misjudgment in their performance of duty at the time. What have we seen under this government? The presidency has become a clearing agent where appointees are cleared. Even situations when people have been obviously seen to be involved in corruption. Situations where government appointees have come out to accuse their colleagues of having been involved in corrupt practices. Those who became whistleblowers were sacked, were reprimanded, and are rather being prosecuted Whilst those who were involved in the corruption have been awarded by the president. In fact, I'm sure by the time he leaves office, he will give those people order of the Volta Civil Division. Order of the Volta Civil Yes, the best national award. Because if those people are awarded with promotion, you understand? Mm -hmm. 
why wouldn't the president award them order of the voter? Mm. So, 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 President Kufuado awards corruption mm. and rewards people who are involved in corruption. Was John Daman Mama dealt with, punished, condemned those who were seen, who were seen to be involved in corruption? And even people who dreamt to make money at the expense of their office, not even to cor get corrupted, okay. but dreamt to make money. You and I do not know how they were going to make money, but it was an aspiration. So you, in under John Mama, it was even a sin to aspire okay. to be rich. That is the sort of comparison we want to see. So he's saying that he has exercised himself mm. from the father for all. It's an apt description of what sort of leadership he want to provide to Ghanaians from the 7th of January 2025. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, we have to leave it here. Thank you very uh, much. And make way for Ochami Bajumba. There's a lot of questions to ask you, especially when you're looking at our politics and doing comparison. Because when I spoke to you from Kenya, and then you are now in Ghana. So I, I don't know if so you can you know what arrange I'll this again. For. I rather want MPP to line up their possible appointees, mm. eh? their, their selection of possible ministerial appointee of their appointees, mm. current appointees, and those who will be appointed in possibly if God becomes so wicked. Eh? In case God becomes so wicked, if the MPP wins, God, God will have been wicked. Yes. It means God doesn't love us. Seriously. If all, all the Ghanaians are going through, if, because the Bible tells me that God will listen to our cries. Mm. You understand? That he's not deaf not to listen to our cries. He's a God who, when you ask for bread, mm. he wouldn't give you a stone. Mm. When you have a fish, he wouldn't give you a serpent. So I know he's a God who listens to the cry of his people. So if God cannot listen to the cries of Ghanaians and throw away this MPP and they should come to power in 2025, then God is not that loving. Well, let, let me... And I'm saying that I want them... I'm not calling for Baumia and Jomama. I want them to line up their men. They said they have the men. Line them up. L let Jomama also line up his people. Let's debate from one sector to the other. So that, for example, Yusuf, Minister for Sports, sitting here. I'm sitting here. Let's debate sports. Minister for Foreign Affairs and our Minister for Potential Minister for Foreign Affairs. Let's debate. Minister for Finance, our Minister of Potential Minister of Finance. Let's debate. You understand? Let's debate sector by sector before it gets to a level of the presidential candidate. That is where Ghanaians will see who has better personnel to serve their interest. Mm. Can I get a commitment to for us to do this interview again? Because we haven't even gone into I'm the always available. Professor I'm always ready. Heritage Foundation and the launch you did. Yes, I'm always available. Mm. In fact, we're going but, to have a very wonderful program on the 19th of July at the city centre. 19th July. Yes, okay. University of Ghana. The speaker will be Kwesi Pratt. The chairperson okay. will be former Chief Justice Sofia Akufo. Mm. And the book reviewer. We, we've compiled all Professor Melsey's programs, uh, things that we've done to celebrate him for the past 12 years. Okay. And reviewer will be Dr. Jampo. Mm. Professor Jampo. Fantastic. So it's going really to be a wonderful program. And I know we're asking Redigo to carry it live for mm. us that mm. day. Comrade Kwesi Pratt will be... Yes, he will be the speaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. We launched it yesterday. And, um, you know, after that, we'll have the Ridley ceremony at Asunye Park on 24th. Mm. And then we'll have 27th, which I have Professor Mills, J.E.A. Mm -hmm. Mills Momira Hockey Tournament. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a program we've done. And then in September, we shall have J.E.A. Mills Memorial Soccer Tournament between Ebusunia Dwarfs and Accra Asa Folk at the Cape Coast Stadium. Okay. Okay. So so I'm, I'm ready. I'm available. Okay. Let's, let's, it's unfortunate that today we didn't have enough time, mm -hmm. but I think we've, we've addressed some of the I, issues. I guess we can arrange some Senna, before Senna, you leave. I want you to take, it, take this up. Let's read your gold. Mm -hmm or Pan-African TV mm. that you are versed with. Set up the platform. Mm. Let MPP set up their men, their best. Mm. Let NDC set up their best, one-on-one. -on -one. Let's debate from now until December 7th, and then let's Ghanaians judge. Okay. Me, thank you.
Thank you. Thank it's you always, always a pleasure. Thank you as always. Uh, well, coming up next is the King of Mid Morning, Ochami Bajimba, with the Mid Morning Show. Stay tuned to Radio Gold ninety point five FM, um, and that concludes our, the Gold Morning Conversation for this week. We are back Monday with another edition. Do you know what listeners like about our station? It's everything.